So our, our, our next talk is Progressive Neural Architecture Search, and I believe Chen Zi Lu will be presenting. Good morning. I'm Chen Xi from Johns Hopkins University, and today I will talk about Progressive Neural Architecture Search. This is joint work with many researchers across Google AI. The outline of the talk is as follows with four main sections, and I will start with introduction and background. Imagine you go to work, you hit the enter key, and then just sit back and relax. You come back the next day for a high quality, well-optimized machine learning solution that is ready to be de delivered and deployed. Sounds lovely, doesn't it? But I bet this is not how your average day looks like. So what is preventing us? A typical machine learning solution consists of both parameters and hyperparameters. And arguably, the most popular machine learning solution nowadays is the neural network. When you think about it, the optimization of parameters is already automated. The machine knows exactly how to do this with backpropagation. It is a tuning of hyperparameters that is not quite automated, and is the main reason why we look like this when sitting in front of our computer. Therefore, the key of AutoML lies in automating the selection of hyperparameters. For a neural network, many hyperparameters lie in its architecture. Because there are so many design choices, an inexperienced engineer will not know where to start. As a result, popular network architectures, like Inception shown here, are proposed by expert practitioners. In the spirit of AutoML and the democratizing AI, we ask whether it is possible to automatically design high-quality network architectures instead of relying on expert experience and knowledge. This line of work is called neural architecture search, which gained significant interest over the past two years. There are two main classes of methods for neural architecture search, and I will briefly explain their pipelines. In evolutionary algorithms, the key element is a candidate pool that keeps the best models visited so far. On the left-hand side is a string that defines the network architecture, and on the right is a score on the validation set. In each iteration, the best candidates are mutated to get a new set of candidates. In reality, this may correspond to using a 5x5 five five convolution instead of a 3x3 three three one. These new candidates are trained for a few epochs before tested for validation accuracy. Finally, old candidates with lower scores are replaced by new candidates with higher scores so that the candidate pool gets improved after this update. Alternatively, one can also use reinforcement learning where the key element is an LSTM agent. In each iteration, the agent generates a string that is interpreted as network architecture. It is constructed and trained by the machine for a few epochs. The machine then returns the validation accuracy, which is treated as a reward for the LSTM agent. After updating its weights using policy gradients, the LSTM agent will now generate a string that hopefully acquires higher reward. This process gets iterated to train a better and better agent. Before our work, neural architecture search had already gained much success. However, they, um, they unanimously suffered from being computationally intensive. For example, NASNet was found after sampling 20,000 models, which used 500 P100s for five days. The goal of our paper is to lower the barrier to AutoML and speed up the NAS process by proposing a novel algorithm. But before we describe the algorithm, it is very important that we understand the architecture search space, which is the focus of this next section. As an overview, we adopt the following strategy and taxonomy, where a ne network consists of cells and a cell consists of blocks. Our goal of architecture search is to find a repeatable cell structure. Once we have a cell structure, the network is constructed using a predefined pattern. On the right, we show how networks are constructed for CIFAR-10 and ImageNet, which has more stride two layers at the beginning. A network is fully specified with two more numbers, capital N, which is the number of cell repetition that basically controls the depth, and capital F, which is the number of filters in the first cell that basically controls the width. They are selected by hand to reach a desired network complexity. Each network, uh, sorry, each cell consists of a capital B equals five blocks that are appended in a recursive fashion. The cell's output is the concatenation of the five blocks' output. Each block is a two-branch structure where input one is transformed by operator one, input two is transformed by operator two, and they are combined to give the block's output. 
Input 1 and input 2 are selections of activations or hidden states. In particular, they may choose from the previous cell's output tensor, the previous previous cell's output tensor, and the previous block's output in the current cell. Operator 1 and operator 2 are selections of layer types. In particular, they may choose from the following eight operations that include convolution, pooling, skip connection, all commonly used in modern CNNs. Finally, for combination, we simply let element-wise addition to be the only choice. As a summary, one cell may look like the example on the right. Every plus sign marks the output of a block. HC minus 1 is the previous cell's output, and HC minus 2 is the previous previous cell's output. What I want to emphasize is that this is already a huge search space, and our goal of architecture search is to find one good cell among these 10 to the 14th candidates. This brings us to the next section, where we describe our progressive neural architecture search algorithm, or PNAS for short. We noticed that the previous approaches all worked directly with the 10 to the 14th final search space. This is a huge space to navigate through, and signal accumulation can be noisy and slow, especially at the beginning. Our main idea is to use a simple to complex curriculum and progressively work our way into this big final search space. More specifically, we can begin by training all one block cells. There are only 256 of them, which we can afford to enumerate. Their validation scores are going to be low because they have fewer blocks and less representation power, but maybe their relative performances are enough to show which cells are, uh, are promising and which are not. We let the k most promising cells expand into two block cells and then iterate. Although this vanilla algorithm captures the main idea, it is not yet practical. The problem is that for a reasonable k, there are hundreds of thousands of two block candidates to train, which is too many, as obtaining the performance of one cell or string takes hours of training and evaluating. Maybe we can afford hundreds of candidates, but we definitely cannot afford hundreds of thousands of candidates. Our solution then is to train a cheap surrogate model that predicts the final performance simply by reading the string. What's interesting here is that the data points collected in the expensive way are exactly training data for this cheap surrogate model because they are supposed to perform the same task. After this cheap surrogate model is trained, the two ways of assessment are used in an alternate fashion. We use the cheap assessment whenever the candidate pool is large and the expensive one whenever the uh, candidate pool is small. There are several desired properties of this surrogate predictor. It should ha handle variable size inputs because we want to share the same predictor across different levels. It should correlate with the true performance because we will use its output to do ranking. And it should be sample efficient as there will only be hundreds of data points to train on at each level. In our work, we tried both an MLP ensemble and an RNN ensemble as predictor. The MLP ensemble deals with variable size inputs by mean pooling and the RNN ensemble by unrolling a different number of times. With the addition of the surrogate predictor, we actually have the complete version of our PNAS algorithm, and we will now see it in action. We begin by enumerating, training, and evaluating all one block cells. We then train the predictor with these data points collected in the expensive way. At the same time, we expand these one block cells into two block candidates by enumerating all possible ways the second block can be appended, and there are hundreds of thousands of them. But fortunately, this time, we have the predictor which can help us rank these candidates in minutes, and the top k candidates are selected according to the predicted score. Since the candidate pool is now small enough, we turn to the expensive assessment and train these candidates using GPU machines in parallel. After this is done, the new data points are used to fine tune the predictor. At the same time, we expand these two block candidates into three block candidates in an enumeration fashion, and again, we can apply the freshly fine-tuned predictor to these hundreds of thousands of candidates and select the top K. These steps are repeated until we get to capital B equals 5. We now describe our experimental results. We performed progressive neural architecture search on the CIFAR 10 dataset using K equals 256. To get a fast proxy, each network used a relatively small depth and width and was trained for 20 epochs using cosine learning rate. The important question here is whether our search algorithm is indeed more efficient. We compare our algorithm against random search and the reinforcement learning algorithm that found NASNet. 
The first observation is that PNAS results come in five groups, and they correspond to the number of blocks in a cell. At the beginning, our validation accuracies are lower than the other methods because they have one-fifth the representation power. But queues accumulate as we progress, and when we reach five blocks, we found a cell with close to 92% accuracy with a little over 1,000 models sampled. In order to reach the same accuracy, the RL method needs to sample 6,000 models. Therefore, we conclude our method is five times more efficient on this search space. Each experiment is repeated for five times, reflected in the error bar for all curves. We then visualize the best cell found in each of the five groups. Here we show the architectures of PNASnet 1 through 3. Here we show the architecture of PNASnet 4 and PNASnet 5. After the search is over, we increase the depth and width of PNASnet 5 and evaluate its quality on both CIFAR 10 and ImageNet. The important question here is whether the advantage during the search process will transfer and yield state-of-the-art performance. Here we show comparison against other neural architecture search methods on CIFAR 10. The first group used reinforcement learning, and the second group all used evolutionary algorithms. Our test set accuracy is on par with the other machine design networks, but I want to direct attention to the final column, which is search cost. We reached the same number with at least 20 times less computation during the search stage. For ImageNet, we consider two settings. In the mobile setting, we restrict the number of trainable parameters and number of multi-add operations under a budget. In the large setting, we drop this constraint and compare against the best models. We see that PNASnet 5 still holds the highest accuracy around the same network complexity. To conclude, in this paper, we propose to search neural network architectures in a simple to complex fashion, while simultaneously learning a surrogate model to guide the search. The result of the search, PNASnet 5, achieves state-of-the-art level accuracies on CIFAR 10 and ImageNet, while being five to eight times more efficient than leading RL and EA methods during the search. We have released code and pre-trained model for PNASnet 5 on ImageNet. Both TensorFlow and PyTorch implementations are available. We firmly believe using our model as image feature extractor will benefit your task. Since our paper appeared on archive, there has been many exciting extensions and developments. Our PNAS algorithm has been applied to related tasks, such as searching Pareto optimal architectures and meta-learning. Also, our algorithm can be used in conjunction with sharing among child models to result in further speed up. Thank you for listening, and please visit my website for all links and materials. Thanks. Do we have any questions? Okay, I have one question. So you motivated all of this with the idea of uh, relaxing at work all day. But uh, still, there were quite some manually designed parameters, like the number of filters and the actual stacking structure of the cells. How far do you think we are from really having automated, completely automated network design? Um, I see. Um, so I think um, it is true that um, we, like, there are, in, in a way, the search space design is the new uh, thing that has to be manually designed. But I think the idea is that um, as long as the search space is general enough, um, it is possible to apply the same set of um, architecture search space to a lot of the tasks, and we don't have to do it again for each of one of the individual tasks. So I th this it, it is, is sort of the current point where we stop, and uh, in the future, we will definitely relax them uh, more and more. Thanks. OK, we have one. Um. Hi. You uh, motivated your uh, approach by saying that the training of a neural network using gradient descent is essentially a, a, a solved problem, uh, but we all know that the loss functions are not actually convex, and although the Adams uh, optimizer seems to be doing well, there is obviously room for improvement there as well, isn't there? Have you thought about how to address that challenge, in some sense, how to uh, aren't there also, you know, uh, heuristics and parameters in the optimization of the networks? Um, I see. So, um, yeah, it is true that, so, so we worked on sort of 
w uh, the hyperparameter optimization, or we want to minimize the number of human designs, but we never claim that the parameter optimization is solved. So it, it's just like we have a good sense of how to do it, but we have uh, much less of a good sense of how to do hyperparameter optimization. That's why we want to bring that side up a little bit. Uh, and definitely, there are, there's benefit in researching um, a good optimizer for parameters. Thanks. OK, let's thank the speaker again.